With the final three rounds of fixtures ahead, things are really starting to hot up in the Barclays FA Women's Super League. And as we return from international break, we're joined by a couple of WSL stars who have returned to their clubs with a spring in their step. Yeah, to be honest, it still doesn't really feel real. You know, it's kind of they're the moments you dream about. And to say it's a dream come true is, is an understatement. Um, I think it would actually be pretty fun to play against England, obviously, because they're hosting it. That's right, Arsenal Swiss fullback Noel Moritz and Northern Ireland and Everton forward Simone. McGill join us on this week's Barclays FA Women's Super League, the warm-up. First up then, let's take a look at where you can watch this weekend's WSL action. It's another massive game in the relegation fight as Aston Villa hosts Bristol City on Saturday with the two sides level on points at the foot of the table. On Sunday, Manchester United take on Spurs looking to keep the pressure on Arsenal in the race for that third place Champions League spot. Brighton travel to North London to face Arsenal whilst Birmingham City hosts Reading with both sides without a win in their last five games and looking to find some late season form. And finally, West Ham hosts Everton with the London side aiming to pull away from the relegation battle after dropping points in their draw with Villa in midweek. And first up on this week's show is Everton forward Simone McGill. They're looking to prop it again here, Everton, and they have to. Simone McGill races away. A simple header for Simone McGill. McGill with the biggest smile on her face. It's poked in by Simone McGill. She has her sixth of the season and Everton are heading for three points. Simone, thanks so much for joining us. Right, it's been an incredible week for you. You helped Northern Ireland qualify for their first ever European Championship. An unbelievable achievement. You must be pinching yourself. Yeah, to be honest, it still doesn't really feel real. You know, it's kind of they're the moments you dream about. And, you know, for us to go ahead and achieve something so special like that, you know, it's something I'll remember forever. Oh, that's amazing. And the squad had a number of injuries to deal with. What is it that carried you through the campaign? I think, to be honest, it's probably the, the team character that we have, you know, the girls, like we've we've been on such a long journey together. You know, some of us have been in that squad for ten to fifteen years, um, and we've experienced so many lows and some highs as well. But I just think the character we have. You know, we lost some huge players in huge games, and I think just our team spirit and the character amongst the group that carried us all the way through. And you know, we had to dig really deep for a lot of results. And you know, I think that's ultimately what, what's carried us this far and, and got us across the line to a major tournament. Did it almost make the moment more special coming through that you had to sort of come through difficult times to then make it to where you guys are now? Yeah, definitely. You know, we've, you know, it kind of put everything into perspective for us, you know, that just all the sacrifices all the girls have had to make, you know, a lot of our girls are still amateur and, uh, you know, they work full time. So, you know, they have to take time off work to go train and they put in so much hard work and, and they miss so many things. So it kind of puts everything into perspective. Like the other night when we're, you know, on such a high, it just, it makes everything worth it. Love it. And look, you made your debut for Northern Ireland when you were just 15 years old. You must have always dreamed about this moment, but did you actually ever think it'd become a reality? It's one of them, yeah. Like, I've got asked this question so many times and I'd always said that I wanted, you know, my biggest dream was to qualify for a major tournament with Northern Ireland and to be part of that first group to, to go and do it. And did I ever think I would see it? I, I'm not I'm not entirely sure, but um, here we are and... To say it's a dream come true is, is an understatement. So uh, definitely a, a career high for me. And it's amazing because let's think about it. It was only in 2004 when the international team was actually reformed. So just 17 years later, here you are. Uh, what do you think the impact will be on the game in Northern Ireland? Yeah, I think, you know, this is going to be the most significant part of the whole thing. It's what it's going to do for football back home. And, you know, even just the attention that we've had around the last two games and the support we've had from the whole entire country has been phenomenal. And just the coverage, you know, it was on every news outlet, it was on every newspaper. And that's massive for our girls because we've never had anything like that. And, you know, I just think like for every young girl who was sat at home watching them games, like how inspired they must be. And I'm excited to see you know, what the future really holds for football back home. Oh, love that. And look, you've made it on our show as well. That, that says it all, really. 
that's it. I mean, <laughs> career high. <itself. laughs> that says it all. But look, let's let's get back to you. It's it's also been your most successful season with Everton, scoring six WSL goals so far. What's been the secret to your success this season? I think uh, a lot kind of comes down to the to the squad. You know, this is probably one of the best squads that I've been involved with when I've been at Everton, you know, the calibre of players that we have here. I think it's really helped kind of push my game on to that next level in terms of, you know, finishing. Uh, you know, I would always have had a sniff around goal, but I think this season I'm a lot more clinical and, you know, maybe taking shots that I wouldn't have took on last year or, you know, I might have passed instead of shoot. And I just think, you know, confidence, you, you kind of go on confidence. Once you get one or two, you know, then you just find yourself in, in a bit of flow and a bit of rhythm. And thankfully, you know, I've, I've just managed to find that this season. And, you know, I've carried that through both club and country. So um, it's been going quite well. Yeah, I think that's so clear to see. And you're sitting comfortably in fifth place now in the WSL. What's your assessment of the season so far? Yeah, like we obviously wanted to, you know, try and compete for them Champions League spots and, and finish as high up the table as possible. And yeah, we're just shy off that. So we're probably disappointed as far as that's concerned. And in terms of we, we lost some some points that we, we would have expected to, to get all three from this season. And, you know, we, we, we reflect and we grow. You know, we've recruited really well this season and we'll recruit re- really well going into next season as well. And we'll just continue to keep building and keep building. And You know, we're heading in such a positive direction, you know, the backing we have from the club and the direction the club want to take the women's side too, you know, it's fantastic. And, you know, we we achieved some really high high moments this season, you know, getting to Wembley, you know, it was the first time for for the club to get to Wembley and hopefully not the last. So uh, the ambitions that we have here are, are, you know, they're really high and we're heading in such a positive direction. You've been at Everton for eight years now after joining you when you were just 18 years old. At the time you were managing schoolwork with weekly trips to Liverpool for trials. What are your memories of that time? That was just a crazy time. You know, I remember I was still doing my A-levels in high school and, you know, I got the opportunity to come across and have a trial for Everton and, you know, they wanted to sign me and it was just like crazy, a crazy few months because I had to finish school. So I was literally like flying back and forth every weekend to play and going back to school on, on a Monday morning. And I even remember like going to the PFA Awards on the weekend and then I was in school on Monday and it was just <laughs> absolutely bizarre. And, you know, you'd be walking down the hallway and everyone would be whispering and being like, oh my God, there's Simone. And, you know, she she met Garth Beale last night and, you know, it was just crazy. Um, you know, when we speak about things that we had to sacrifice doing that, I had to miss out on a lot of things, you know, a lot of moments with my my school days, you know, my friends, my best friends who I grew up with, you know, to come across and do that. But you have to be self-driven and you have to be dedicated if you want to try and make it at the top level. And, you know, that that's what I had to do. But then when you experience such high moments in your career, you look back at them times and you're like, you know, it makes it all worth it in the end. Love that. And look, you've seen a lot change in your time. What's the biggest difference now from when you first joined Everton? It's just the professionalism and just how people are starting to to view the game. You know, back whenever I started this this journey, like no one really knew. They didn't know anything. They didn't know what games were being played, when they were being played, like who the big teams in the women's game were. They knew nothing about the game. Whereas now, you know, it's everywhere. It's, It's on your main, your main news channels, your sports channels. It's you know, just the exposure the game has now and the level of interest and obviously with that, the investment and everything. And, you know, that's still growing and that's only going to keep improving and keep improving. But, you know, I definitely think that that's the biggest thing for me that's changed, just the, the general interest. Thanks, Simone. It's great to have you on. Good luck this weekend. Yes, no problem at all. Thanks for having me. And now it's a massive week at the top and the bottom of the table and Man City and Chelsea kicked it all off when they faced up at the Academy Stadium in what was billed as a potential title decider and it didn't disappoint. It's Chelsea who hold the two-point advantage now. They also have the superior goal difference. Just two games to go after this. Manchester City, 13 wins in their last 14. So who will hold their nerve? That swings the corner away. Kerr is there and Chelsea lead. What a crucial goal that could be. It could be the goal that settles the WSL title. Manchester City nil, Chelsea won. Here's Hemp. Missed by Bright, it's 1-1. Curry Kelly. And the lead lasted just three minutes. Mistake by Millie Bright. And Manchester City are level. Patrick last week, big league goal this. Kerr inside Greenwood. Out comes Roebuck. Penalty kick. And 
It has to be said, Alex Green would look really uncomfortable one-on-one -on -one with Sam Kerr, who did brilliantly. And he rode back against Penilla Harder. Touch it in, and Chelsea are in front again. What a game this is turning out to be now. And Kirby, what's she doing there? Kelly, newest wants it in the middle. Mistake by Bright, and it's tucked in. It's 2-2. And Lauren Hemp has equalised for Manchester City. And what on earth were Chelsea doing there? And it's Greenwood with the delivery. Oh, brilliant save. Sensational save there by Anne Katrin Berger. One of the best saves of the season. Super stop. Listen to the applause from the bench. It finishes 2-2, and Emma Hayes thinks that's the point that will take them to the title. Not yet today, but she knows what it means. Manchester City having to play chase up in their last two games. Chelsea champions elect. So a draw means it's all in Chelsea's hands. City can't catch them if they win their final two games of the season. Yep, it's getting tasty. Spurs and Reading are up next for the reigning champions, and they might just gain a few fans from the blue side of Manchester next weekend. But even if the top two are nailed on, what about the race for that precious third Champions League spot? Well, our next guest might have something to say about that battle. She'll be desperate for another chance to add a second Champions League medal to her collection. Firstly, thank you so much for joining us. Right, we've got to talk about it. You picked up a bump last week playing for Switzerland as you qualified for the Euros in 2022. How are you feeling now? Are you all right? Yeah, um, I did get a pretty big hit on my shin. Um... But yeah, I trained yesterday and today. Uh, still feels a bit sore. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to see day by day. Um, yeah, how it reacts. Um, still hurts quite a bit. But um, yeah, we'll see. Oh, at least you got to train today. So fingers crossed yeah. for you. Fingers, fingers crossed. crossed. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Congratulations on qualifying, by the way. You had to work hard for it, didn't you? After winning the first ever penalty shootout in the Euros playoffs. You must be ecstatic. Oh, yeah. Super, super excited. Um, yeah, there was two really tough games. But yeah, we were super happy when we uh, finally got that last penalty. And um, yeah, so really, really excited to go to the Euros next year. Love that, love that. And look, obviously you're here with two of your Swiss teammates. Have you guys been teaching any of the squads any German or French? Um, yeah, some uh, know a little bit of German from school. So yeah, <laughs> we tend to, uh, yeah, talk a few words, but um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we, we learn French and German at school. I can't remember a word, which is really, really bad for us. Really bad. Well, but yeah, I can't yeah. speak any French, so I'll, I'll stick to German. Stick to German, yeah. Um, all right, so in terms of back to football now, um, are you hoping to avoid playing England at the competition or would you love to come up against some of your Arsenal teammates? Um, I think it would actually be pretty fun to play against England, obviously, because they're hosting it. I feel like the, yeah the atmosphere would be incredible. But yeah, England, they're, they're an amazing team. So yeah, maybe maybe meet them a bit later in the competition. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and what's the feeling within the Arsenal squad at the minute as you head into your final four games of the WSL season? There's still so much on the line though, isn't there? Yeah, um, I think everybody's really excited. Uh, of course, we, we do really want to get that Champions League spot and get third place. Um, so yeah, really important games coming up for us. Um, yeah and just want to get all all the points and play some good football love that love that and look obviously uh joe montenmuro is leaving at the end of the season how much do the girls want to ensure that he does leave on a high oh yeah of course um yeah i think that it's very important to us players that we give joe a nice send off and yeah obviously just just win win these last games so it makes it makes it yeah a nice farewell for him Definitely. And this is your first season in the WSL. Obviously, it's been a strange year with no fans, but how have you found it so far? Um, yeah, I really enjoyed my time um, here at Arsenal. Obviously, it's been it's been a bit different. Um, like you said, no fans, um, because I was really looking forward to the atmosphere here. Um, I was told the stadiums are always quite full and um, yeah, it's, it's always nice to play in front of a big crowd um so yeah hopefully next season i can really enjoy that yeah meadow park or oh, game that meadow park <laughs> honestly i really hope you get to experience that because it is amazing so 
But, you know, looking back at your time over the course of the year, is there one moment in particular that stands out for you? Well, I have to say, I just... I just really enjoy playing um, good football, playing against the top teams. Um, obviously Chelsea or Man City. Um, yeah, it's it's always nice to play against such big teams and um, just experience that whole feeling around it. And um, yeah, so I've really been been enjoying my time here. Yeah, and what would you say the main differences between the WSL and the German leagues? I do think that the league here is it's very football orientated um it's also very physical but it's, it's it's very it's also very tactical and yeah you get you I've watched a lot of games um since I've been here and I just really really enjoy uh watching it because it's 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 really good football that's that's been playing you see amazing goals and nice combinations I think the league is going in a really good direction and I I can't wait to yeah to get on with it Love it. And this is the sort of stuff I like finding out, right? So how have you been finding your new life in London? Where's been your favourite lockdown spots? Well, to be honest, I haven't really been able to experience a lot just because, yeah, just because of the lockdown, couldn't really go into London that often. Yeah, obviously, I, I've been I've been into the city, but I think St. Albans is really is a really um, nice place, um, really cute coffee shops and just nice parks. So I've, I've been enjoying my time just here pretty local, um, yeah, for the last few months, which has also been nice, just getting to know the area. Love that. I'm telling you, St Albans is a very nice place in London, all right? So no, you're in the place. <laughs> you're up. That's, you're in the that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that fits. Love that. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. No problem. All right, before we go, there's just time to check in with the Barclays FA WSL table. A draw in that massive midweek game between Man City and Chelsea means the Blues maintain their two-point lead at the top and that could be enough for Emma Hayes' side to secure back-to-back -back WSL titles. That's as long as they pick up at least four points from their final two fixtures. Arsenal Manchester United stay level on points with just the London side's goal difference keeping them in that valuable third Champions League spot, though they'll have a game in hand over Casey Stoney's team. Back-to-back -back victories mean Everton in fifth maintain a seven-point advantage over Brighton, while Spurs will be hoping their FA Cup win over Reading can inspire their league form as they look to leapfrog the Royals into seventh. Meanwhile, at the bottom, the relegation battle hangs in the balance with West Ham, Birmingham City, Aston Villa and Bristol City all still in danger. Wow, it's getting proper tense now at the top and the bottom of the table. Sure is, that's a massive game between Villa and Bristol. Gotta love the drama. Can't wait, that's all we have time for this week, but we'll be back next Friday for another Barclays FA Women's Super League, The Warm Up.